Today we're going to study the final digits of square numbers. A square number is the product of a number in itself. The first square number is 1 times 1, which is 1. The second square number is 2 times 2, which is 4. The third square number is 3 times 3, which is 9. Here I've listed the first 30 square numbers. We're going to look at the final digits of these numbers. If you look at the first black row of this table, the first 10 squares, the final digits are 1, 4, 9, 6, 5, 6, 9, 4, 1, 0. In a given column, the final digits are all the same. The final digits of the squares in the first column are all 1, in the second column they're all 4, in the third column they're all 9, and so on. What's the explanation for this pattern? The first observation is that the numbers in a given column, say the third column, they're all squares of numbers ending in 3. Right, 9 is equal to 3 squared, 169 is equal to 13 squared, 529 is equal to 23 squared. And those all end in 3. And similarly for any other column, 49 is 7 squared, 289 is 17 squared, 729 is 27 squared, and all those numbers end in 7. All the numbers being squared end in 7. Okay, so we'll combine this with another observation, which is that the final digit of a square depends only on the final digit of the number being squared. Let's look at an example. 14 times 14. In order to compute the result, you first write a 6 down in the 1's place and carry a 1 to the 10's place. You do this because 4 times 4 is 16. Then you do some further computations to compute the digit in the 10's place and the digit in the 100's place. But those don't affect the digit in the 1's place. The digit in the 1's place depends only on the digit in the 1's place of the number being squared. That's why if you look at a given column, all the numbers end in the same digit. Here is the sequence of final digits of square numbers in black. For each gray number, for each gray digit, if you have a number ending in that digit and you square it, you get a number ending in the black digit below it. We're going to focus on the first nine of these. So all of them except for 0. The first 9 of them are 1, 4, 9, 6, 5, 6, 9, 4, 1. You might notice the symmetry about 5. If you go 1 to the left of 5, you see the same digit as if you go 1 to the right of 5. If you go 2 to the left of 5, you see the same digit as if you go 2 to the right of 5, and so on. We would like to explain this symmetry. In order to do so, we'll express it more precisely. The 1 on the left is the final digit of a square of a number ending in 1. The 1 on the right is the final digit of the square of a number ending in 9. Similarly, the 4 on the left is the square of a number with final digit ending in 2. And the 4 on the right is the square of a number with final digit ending in 8 and so on. We can express the symmetry using a table. Here I've written a table down. A number of the form 10k plus 1, a number that's one more than a multiple of 10, is a number ending in 1. Similarly, a number of the form 10k plus 2 is a number ending in 2, and so on. And the symmetry can be expressed by saying that if you look at a given column of the table and square both of the entries of the column, then their final digits will be the same. So I paired them off. Um, the final digit of a square of a number ending in 1 is the same as the final digit of a square of a number ending in 9. So that's why the first two entries are 10k plus 1 and 10k plus 9. Similarly, the 
number squares of numbers with final digit 2, pair off with squares of numbers with final digit 8. That's why I have 10k plus 2 and 10k plus 8 in the second entry, second column rather, and so on. In order to see why two entries of a column have squares ending in the same digit, we're going to rewrite the bottom row of the column. Sorry, we're going to rewrite the bottom row of the table. The way we'll do this is we'll rewrite 9 as 10 minus 1, 8 as 10 minus 2, 7 as 10 minus 3, and 6 as 10 minus 4. Doing so, the resultant algebraic expression for each number in the bottom row is given in the bottom row of this modified table. Note now that we have a multiple of 10 plus 1 in the upper left-hand entry, and we have a multiple of 10 minus 1 in the lower right-hand entry, lower left-hand entry, rather. If we look at the second column, the top number is a number 2 more than a multiple of 10, and the bottom number is a number 2 less than a multiple of 10, and so on. So we've made it more symmetrical. The second table is more symmetrical than the first table. So why is it that if we take two numbers in a given column and square them, they have the same final digit? This follows from the claim that if you take a number that's a certain amount more than a multiple of 10, and a certain amount, and another number that's a certain amount less than a multiple of 10, if you square both of those numbers, they'll have the same final digit. If that's true, then for example, in the second column, um, we have a number that's two more than a multiple of 10 and a number that's two less than a multiple of 10. And so according to the claim that I've written down, their squares should have the same final digit. So we just need to explain why the claim that I've written down is true. In order to see the, that the claim is true, we'll need to do some algebra. Here I've written the square of a number that's r more than a multiple of 10. I've used the distribute law, distributive law to expand the expression. Here I've written the square of a number that's r less than a multiple of 10. I've used the distributive law to expand the expression. We're interested in the final digits of these numbers. So I claim that the final digit doesn't depend on either of the first two terms for either the top expression or the bottom expression. The first term is 100 times something, so it's going to affect only what's in the hundreds place and higher places. The second term is 20 times something, which is 10 times something. So it's only going to affect what's in the tens place and hundreds place and higher. All that the final digit depends on, then, is the third term. But the third term in the first expression is r squared, and the third term in the second expression is r squared. Where that comes from is it comes from negative r times negative r, which gives you r squared. Because the final digit depends only on the third term, and the third term is the same for both expressions, both expressions have the same final digit. Both numbers have the same final digit. We've now explained why, if you take two numbers in a given column, their squares have the same final digit. Here I've listed the non-zero digits that can occur as final digits of square numbers. I've listed them in order of size rather than in the order that they appear in the sequence. So this set of numbers has a name. It's called the set of quadratic residues modulo 10. I'm not going to explain precisely what's meant by quadratic residues modulo 10 today, but I'll comment that the reason that modulo 10 appears in the phrase is because we're writing numbers in base 10. 
Next time, we're going to look at final digits of squares in different bases. Thanks very much for listening.